Has the road run out for Baiju's? I don't just mean the company, I mean the man behind it too, Baiju Ravindran. He donned many hats in the last few years. Celebrity founder, rock star CEO, and now embattled businessman. He's been trying a lot of things to turn Baiju's around, but the investors are not buying it. A group of them has called for an EGM tomorrow. An EGM is an extraordinary general meeting. Corporate laws allow shareholders to call such a meeting. The idea is to discuss urgent issues, hence the extraordinary angle. A couple of questions now. One, who called this meeting? Key investors like the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative, General At Atlantic, Process Ventures, and Peak XV. Question number two, why did they call this meeting? To discuss a, chance, a, a change in leadership. In simpler words, to remove Baiju Ravindran. Now reports say the investors wanted to rejig the board. Ravindran and his family out, new faces in. Just one problem though. The courts have now stepped in. Once the EGM was announced, Baiju Ravindran moved the Karnataka High Court. He said the investors did not follow the rules and the court agreed. It has granted interim relief to him. So any decision taken at the EGM will be non-binding. Assume the shareholders decide to fire Baiju Ravindran. That decision won't take immediate effect, not until this court case is settled. So he's hanging by a thread. The next court hearing is on the 13th of March. That will give us more clarity on Ravindran's future. But frankly, it doesn't look good. Multiple petitions have been filed against Baiju's at the company law tribunal. And what do they want? To begin with, insolvency proceedings. Again, in simpler words, they want to declare that Baiju's is bankrupt. The first such petition was heard on the 6th of February. It was filed by a marketing vendor called Surfer Technology. The second was filed by an international lender called Glass Trust Company. And the third by a BPO firm called Teleperformance Business Services. All of them want the same thing. Declare Baiju's bankrupt, take legal action and sell off assets to pay the debt. But not everyone is waiting around for that. Some Baiju's customers are taking matters into their own hands. Like these parents who've gone viral on social media, they wanted a refund for an unused learning program. After weeks of trying, they lost it. They went to the local Baiju's office, took down a television installed there and took it home. You have to see this. ये वीडियो बना रहा हूं मैं क्योंकि ये टीवी ले जा रहे हैं इनका रिफंड जो है अभी तक नहीं हुआ है नहीं मान रहे ले जा रहे ले गए ये नहीं मान रहे कैसे लेके ले जाना ठीक है सर बिल्कुल आप बात कर लीजिएगा एबीएस सर से कैसे होगा सर ठीक है चलो ओके नाउ वी डोंट कंडोन दिस दिस इज नो वे ऑफ रिकवरिंग योर मनी देयर आर लीगल मींस फॉर दैट but we do understand the emotions here. Baiju's used harsh tactics to gain customers. Their employees talked of a toxic culture, like pushing products on parents who could not afford them, or setting unrealistic targets for salespersons, or feeding the fears of students. This fueled the rise of Baiju's, but it also left many families broke. So now they want answers, or in this case, a television. But the company's investors have gone past that stage. They don't want answers anymore. They want Baiju Ravindran gone. Even law enforcement agencies are in the loop. Reports say the ED has issued a lookout circular for Baiju Ravindran. Now, the ED is India's economic intelligence agency. The Enforcement Directorate, that's what it's called. It fights financial crimes. And right now, the ED thinks Ravindran is a flight risk. So reports say the Immigration Bureau has been asked to keep an eye out to make sure that he does not leave India. Now, the ED's case is a, is a different one. It concerns violations of foreign exchange rules. And how much money are we talking about? Almost 9,300 crore rupees. That is close to $1 billion. So the walls are closing in on Baiju Ravindran. His investors want him out. His lenders want him declared bankrupt. His customers want their money back and law enforcement is looking to nail him. It's quite a fall for this company. Baiju's was once the poster child of Indian startups. It was valued at $22 billion, but today it's at risk of being sold for parts. Such headlines are not a good look for India. Think of what it says about corporate governance in the country, about company leadership. You have a man who names a company after himself, takes millions from investors, takes wrong decisions, and then tanks the whole thing. 
It's not just his money that is gone. It's also investors and funds. And Baiju's is not alone. We've seen another example and many other examples, in fact, in India, like the Sony Z fiasco. Again, the issue was poor corporate governance. In Z, the top leadership is accused of siphoning money, the money of investors and shareholders, people who put their hard-earned income in their hands. What message does it send to ordinary Indians looking to invest in the stock market, or foreign investors for that matter? So such issues are not limited to one company. They affect the whole brand. They can erode trust in Indian markets, which is why it's important to course correct, to set the house in order, to review expansion strategies, to scale back nonsensical valuations, and most importantly, to hold people accountable. It's a test for Baiju's and India. As the world feels the shock of wars, India stands as a beacon of strength. The first post-Defense Summit 2024 will showcase cutting-edge technologies, forging partnerships between industry, academia and research organizations. Witness the transformative story of India's defense sector. First Post Defense Summit 2024